Season 21 of our Building a Nation save begins today and we have got just five seasons left to go. We're going to finish after season 25 and we are hopefully going to do a pretty good job this year. Last season we were crowned champions of Romania as we expect with only one defeat taking place in the entirety of the 40 game season. We also won the Romanian Cup 2-1 and of course we won the Romanian Super Cup because we do every year. In the Champions League we finished second place in our group and made it all the way through to the round of 16 where we lost against Inter Milan. And that has meant coefficient wise, we are in a bad, bad way. We got a 9.5 for last season. We really need to start turning things around. And by we, I use we as a nation. We need the other teams of Romania as well to do well in Europe. We're obviously going to be doing another Champions League run this season to see how things go. I'd like to get to maybe the quarterfinals. That's probably my target. Already on the 1st of July, a whole bunch of transfer business has taken place. Jacob Bell has left the club signing for Nottingham Forest for 2.4, potentially going to £3 million. We played him, we just didn't really play him enough. Dan Albu has also left the club for potentially up to £7.5 million. When the uh, Middle East comes calling, Aldo Hale are from Qatar, you kind of don't really have too much of a choice. Thing is, he's only on £14,500 a week. Um, we got £6.5 million, potentially going to £7.5 Plus, he wasn't really playing, so he was getting annoyed anyway. Pavel Sloncic has also left the club. He has moved over to FC Arges, our former team. This was a tactical decision because I think he's good, but he's not good enough for us. For £4 million, £4.5 million, he's going to hopefully go there, get some game time, play some football, and improve that FC Arges side. And another player that I'm hoping is going to do a similar thing, but maybe in a couple of years' time, is Arlend Mata, signed for CFR Cluj. We brought him in from Varda. He's gone over there. He's in their second-tier team at the moment but I'm hoping he's going to be on the cusp of getting some first-team football there. We've also sold Florian Badescu. He has gone to FC Hermannstadt. Similar situation. Hopefully he goes there, gets some game time, turns them into a slightly stronger side. He's gone on a free, like I said. And Fernando Cedeno has also left the club once again this time. He's gone to Fortuna Sittard on a free transfer. Nobody in Romania wanted him for some reason. He's, uh, he's not very good. We have spent about £25 million so far in this transfer window. The big signing we have made is Marco Scuglia, who's a 19-year-old Italian defender and defensive midfielder. I brought him in to be a centre-back. However, I'm probably not going to lock him in, and I fear that my assistant manager is probably going to play him as a defence midfielder on occasions. He's cost £20 million. Um, it's a lot of money. He's never played a game of football, but we kind of need to get some good youngsters in, and youngsters who are good enough to play for us 20 million pound might have been a bit steep, but we've got more money than cents. The other signing we've brought in is 18 year old Kjell Bertelsen, an 18 year old Norwegian central defender signed from Sarsborg. How much money do you think we paid? Considering we paid 20 million pounds for the last guy, you'll probably not think this was 3.2 million pounds. And that was it. That was his minimum fee release. He's cost 3.2 million pounds. He's a wonder kid. He's come in as a star player because when we brought him in, there were some other teams sniffing around him. I've given him a bit of a pay rise. One issue we do have with Kiel, he's got a 6.5 minimum fee release. We need to give him some new contracts to try and get that gone as a loud motorbike goes past my house. That is all the transfer business we've done so far. We've still got about £30 million to spend, just over in fact, and a bit of wage budget as well. I'm expecting to have some players moving on throughout this summer transfer window, so let's see what we've actually done. Four more players have joined the club, but a lot of players have left the club some of this is purely down to registration, okay? We've got not enough Romanian footballers, and we've got too many people who aren't Romanian, basically. Keseret has left. He signed for West Ham for £7.5 million, potentially going up to £8 million. He was a good player, but he counts as foreign, and obviously he's not Romanian, so he kind of ticks two boxes of things we don't really need in our squad at the moment, so keseret has gone. Razvan Lop, however, ticks one of the boxes of the things that we do want to keep, and that is Romanians. He's moved over to FC Arges, similar to some of the transfers earlier on in the transfer window, I'm hoping he's going to improve their side for £2.6 million, potentially up to £3 million. He's probably, they've got themselves a good deal there. For a Romanian international right back, they've got themselves a very good deal. Mihai Marin is another player to move on internally in Romania. He's gone to Universitatia Craiova for just over half a million pounds in total. 625 in fact. Hopefully, again, he's going to improve this side. And another player who's moved on internally in Romania is Philippe Philippe. He's gone to FCSB for £1.4 million. He's hopefully going to get some game time, make them better. But the big one is Pap Diego Loppi. He's moved over to Bournemouth for £60 million. I don't know, and I don't genuinely don't think he's worth that much money, but he's gone for £60 million or up to 48.5 so far. Had a good season last year, obviously 15 goals in the league, 9 assists as well, 23 goals in all competitions. But for £60 million, 
we've got not necessarily better players, let's be honest, but we've got players who can certainly just fill into that position. Like Adrian Tuka. I'm, yeah, he's coming on a free transfer. He's also a left winger and he's got a broken leg. Um, he's coming on a free transfer. I want to loan him out. That's literally the only reason I brought him in. I want to loan him out. I fear he was going to retire because of his broken leg, so I needed to get him into the club. For £3 million, we've signed Andre Stinger from FC Argus. This is most definitely one for the future, although he is a right winger. And we don't have a first-team right winger player right now, so maybe Stinger, at 18 years of age, is going to get a lot of football this year. Somebody who won't get a lot of football this year, or at least not for us, is Tobias Fischer, an 18-year-old Danish left winger. He's gone out on loan immediately, signed on a free transfer, hopefully one for the future, or at the very least, one to make other teams in Romania better. And we also welcome the return of Bienvenu Eno, who has signed on a free transfer after his contract at West Brom? No, Liverpool was ended. I say ended. He had a three-year deal. It's expired. He's come back on a free transfer. It's a good player to get on a free. However, I feel like we've missed the peak years of his development. I feel like when we sold him, he needed to be getting a lot more game time at that point. Moved to Liverpool, got nothing. Spent a year out on loan at West Brom in the Championship. He's done all right there, let's be honest. A couple of goals, a couple of assists. He'd come back to us on a free transfer. I'm hoping we've not missed the boat of an O. He's still only 23, but will be 24 in a few days' time. And that is actually all of the transfer business we've done. So only four players joining, but if we take a look here, sort by fee, we have got a huge amount of players going out on loan as well. And all of them, hopefully all of them, most of them at the very least, will be going on loan into Romania. So we've got Lawrence, Loppy, Mendy, Diara, Karasu, Kyrgias. He's good, by the way. He's turning into a pretty decent central defender. All of these players going out on loan to other teams in Romania, with the exception of a couple. I think like this man might not be playing in Romania. But yeah, for the most part, they're all in Romania. That That's definitely not Romania. Something as well that I want to bring your attention to um, is our affiliate clubs. So I've done something which I never thought I would ever be able to do. I've got Generation Foots, who are one of the best African sides, the best Senegalese side for youth players. I've got them as a feeder club. I don't know how I've managed to do this, but when I asked them and they said, do you want to help? And I went, yes, of course I do. Give me your list of teams. They were one of the teams on this list. Other teams on the list were like ASEC Mimosas. We had all the really good African sides I like to steal players from. So this could be really beneficial. Also, sorting by value, these are normally the good ones. 18 years of age, their most expensive player. He is a goalkeeper. We probably don't need him. So far then, the season has kicked off very well in all competitions. We are currently top of the Romanian First League. 11 wins, not 11 wins, 11 games, 9 wins, 2 draws, 0 defeats, 29 points, a positive 24 goal difference. We have won the Romanian Super Cup as well for, I want to say, the 8th time in a row, something along those lines. It's, it's the 7th time in a row. And we are obviously in the Champions League and the Romanian Cup, which we are pretty much every season now. Just to show you how well we've kicked off this season, by the way, um, we won our opening game 7-1, Tom Davidson scoring a hat-trick. So the starting lineup that we are going to be going for then, or the three players that we are locking in, we are locking in Simic as our right-back. Alexa Simic, now 19 years of age, still 5'4", is going to be our number one right-back for the season. I don't know whether this is a good idea. I'm hoping that five-star potential is true, because that is why we are doing it. If we don't play Simic, they'll play Dimitru, which I don't want them to do, or they'll play Andre, which I don't want them to do, so Simic is being locked in. On the right-hand side is George Boateng. George Boateng, you might remember, is a player that we brought in last season from Carella, and he's not a right winger. But he wants to play football. I want to get him some game time. We don't have a right winger. Georgie Boateng might be the man to do the job. I'm not convinced this is a good idea. He's also wanted um, by PSG, which says to me he's good. There's definitely this, this four and a half star potential ability is definitely somewhat accurate. So I want to kind of get some game time under his belt, turn him into a better player. I can't fit him in as that attacking midfielder. That's the problem. And up front is Tom Davidson. Now, Tom Davidson, obviously 19 years of age, English under 21 international, signed from Kettering a few years ago, spent last season out on loan at Sepsi, scoring five league goals. He's played 11 league games and scored 12 so far this season. If we look at his form, he scored three hat-tricks. He scored a hat-trick in the opening game, then against Craiovia, and then also against the other Craiovia. So I, I don't know why he's so good. He's six foot five. He's got 16 finishing, 16 first touch. He's a good footballer. He's genuinely a really good footballer. And I want to keep hold of him and play him until the rest of time. Now, I don't normally show this at the start of a season anyway, but I want to draw your attention to Carlo McLennan, who is a four and a half star player. He's ridiculous. 
He is absolutely ridiculous. We signed him from Celtic a few years ago. Still only 24. He's wanted by teams over in Saudi Arabia. He's cost just under £20 million. But he's been really, really good. He's really good so far this season as well. I don't ever want to lose McLennan. I feel like McLennan is the gem. If we play McLennan and Davidson, first of all, they can speak the same language. Hopefully they can both speak English. I imagine they should be able to. They can speak the same language. They can communicate really well, score loads of goals, get loads of assists, that kind of thing. But also, he's bloody good at football, isn't he? Right then, let's jump forward then to December to see how things have gone in the first half of the season. I'm hoping we're still top of the table, and I'm hoping we still haven't lost. Well, we are still top of the table, but we have lost our first game of the season. A 4-1 defeat against FC Arges, which I'm weirdly kind of okay with. I want teams, the Clujas, your Rapids, your Arges, your other Clujas, your Craiovias, the teams up this end of the table, I want them to be able to be good enough to beat us. That's the stupid thing. I don't want to win the league comfortably every year, but I feel like we're going to for the foreseeable future because nobody else seems to get much better unless we basically fr like throw players at them for cheap value. In other competitions as well, in the Champions League, we're not doing massively well, but we are in 13th place. We've got three wins so far, Sevilla, Olympiacos and Celtic, a draw against Dortmund and then two defeats against Lyon and Man City. As long as we get through, I'm kind of okay with that. How are the other teams from Romania doing. Arges are literally next to us. They've beaten Juve Molde and also beating Celtic. They've also drawn with Dortmund. Okay, both of us drew 1-1. They've lost to Lille and they've lost against Bayern. And then CFR Cluj as well in there. Beating Montpellier, Galatasaray, drawing with Everton and Barcelona, losing against RB Salzburg and Benfica. Have we only got three teams or is there a fourth one in here that I can't quite easily see? I think it's just three for now. Obviously, we're about to head into January. We've got just over £55 million to spend. I don't really think we're going to spend any of it. I think our team's good enough to do well in most competitions and I'm only going to buy someone if it's kind of an unbelievable bit of business to do. Okay, we've brought in five players and we've sold two. Dan Mutiaba has left the club. His return to the club was uh, expensive and not that good, let's be honest. He's moved back over to France, this time signing for Marseille for 5.25, potentially going up by a further million pounds. So it's not actually terrible he started, he's actually kind of broke back into the first team since his loan spell at Cluj. He kind of broke back in a little bit. But ultimately, for a now 31-year-old, he's not going to get better and I don't think he's good enough for us. We also sold this man um, for pennies. So yeah, we didn't really sell too much apart from Matiaba. We did spend a lot of money trying to strengthen our side, however. Janos Vedixa could be his name has joined. He is a Hungarian left-back signed from Debreshkin. He is our cheapest signing at £2.1 million. For £3.9 million, Mohamed Padanu has signed from VfL Wolfsburg, a versatile central midfielder. For £11.75 million, we've gone back to Copenhagen because I think they might have had a golden generation and we've picked up Sebastian Toft Christiansen, who's going to be arguably a right winger, maybe a striker, probably a right winger. Davidson's kind of got that position locked down. For £14 million, Isaac Bonsu has joined the club from NEC Nijmegen, might be their name, not quite sure, from the Netherlands. He's a good player. He's basically come in for kind of depth. We need a few more players in our squad. Bonsu, I think, is a decent player to do that. Similarly is Borja Arbilaria, might be his name. He's come in from Vigo. He's cost about £15 million. It's probably a bit steep, but on his debut for the club, he did score and get an assist, which is always nice. And the final player to bring in is Luciano, a 25-year-old Dutch striker, signed for Man United on a loan deal until the end of the season, and we can buy him for £18 million if he's any good. And so far, he's done absolutely nothing in the league. However, in the Champions League, he did get an assist against Partizan and score a hat-trick against Manchester City. So, you know, he plays for Man United and playing against Man City in the Champions League, he's clearly wanted to just do one over them. And apparently he has. Now, you might be wondering what's happened to Tom Davidson then if we needed a new striker. Well, he has damaged his cruciate ligaments. Um, I think he did this just before the uh, January transfer window, or not just before, just before the end of the season in December. So, yeah, he's missed a lot of football. He's already scored 19 goals in the league so far this season. He's been very, very good, but that injury has ended his season prematurely, which is annoying. Another player who seems to be doing quite well for us is Kirby Sima, a player that we signed last season, I believe, from Polytechnica Timurusari Timusawara, might be the name, for £2.2 .2 million. I've not locked him in. He's just getting game time in that defence midfield role, so that's actually pretty good. From a fixture perspective... On the 16th of February, we are currently top of the Romanian First League, which is what you would expect. We have also just beaten Manchester City 5-1, which is obviously very, very good. And we're into the Romanian Cup quarterfinals. That's what that is. 
what's happened? What's actually gone on? So in the league phase, we finished in 17th place, which means to go into the playoffs, which is what we are currently doing. And we are 5-1 up against Manchester City. And as we know, Luciano scoring three goals in that game, which I think was actually not his debut. But I mean, I say it's not his debut. Of course it wasn't. He's only played five times for us. And he scored a hat-trick against Man City to possibly put us through to the next round of the cup, which is ridiculous. Now, whilst the youth intake has not taken place just yet, this is what we get every year, by the way. It's an average intake. Every single season, we have an average youth intake and there's never anybody good. So, yeah, just don't expect too many good, decent players coming through our youth intakes. There might be the odd one here or there. Normally, we have to steal them from other teams in Romania, which is kind of counterproductive when we're trying to build a nation. Right then, let's jump forward then to the end of the regular season in Romania, see how well we get on in the Champions League as well. I'm hoping we don't balls this up. We've certainly got the ability to balls it up, but I hope we go through. As expected, we do obviously top the regular season for the Romanian First League, which puts us into the Champions Playoff, which we are only four points clear of CFR Cluj at the moment. But obviously, we've only got 10 games to play, and we play against Cluj twice, so if we beat them twice, we should be easily crowned champions once again, which is good. We also almost balls it up against Manchester City. We lost the second leg 2-1, but we do go through 6-3 on aggregate. We then move forward to the round of 16, where we almost balls it up against Atletico Madrid as well. We win 5-2 in the first leg and then lose 3-1 in the second leg. We are just somehow scraping our way through rounds. I mean, I don't really know how we're doing this. So yeah, we won 5-2 at home. And then we lose 3-1 away, but we go through 6-5 on aggregate, which means the quarterfinal, which is not drawn just yet. Who's in the quarterfinal? We've got, obviously, ourselves, Barcelona, Inter, Lyon, Watford, Arsenal, Sevilla, and Chelsea. I don't fancy our chances, but I think if we get Watford or Sevilla, I feel like we should be able to beat either of those two. Barcelona, Inter we've already beaten, actually. We've already beaten Inter so far this season, I think, so... Maybe we could do anyone from that left-hand side of the of the draw. Barcelona, Lyon, Arsenal, Chelsea, I'm not massively convinced on. But we have just gone past Man City as well. I don't know why I'm getting all excited about doing well in the Champions League. We're, we're probably getting knocked out in the next round. But the fact that we've got through to the quarterfinals of the Champions League is obviously some very good progress. We've jumped all the way now to the end of the season. It's the 1st of June and we have once again been crowned champions of Romania. We win all 10 of our games in the Champions Playoff, which is obviously very, very good. However, we did lose the Romanian Cup Final against CFR Cluj, which means we've only won the double. Until I show you this result, which is the Champions League Final, and we win it on penalties. We got to the Champions League Final, we drew 2-2, we were 2-0 down. Were we 2-0 down? What's happened? What's happened? Yeah, we, we were... No, we weren't 2-0 down. We were 2-1 down in the 84th minute. Dimitri scores the goal to equalise, taking us into extra time, injury time and all that bobbins. Nothing happened. And then we win on penalties. Bertelsen, the 19-year-old, scoring the winning penalty to win us the Champions League. What's gone on? Honestly, what's happened here? So we know where we were with the Atletico Madrid game. We did lose one of the matches, but we did scrape by. We then drew Barcelona and won both of the legs. So we won 3-1 and 1-0. We then go through to the semi-final where we beat Lyon 3-2. So it was a 1-1 draw in the home leg or in the first leg and then a 3-2 win in the second. Arsenal scraping by to get to the final as well on penalties against Chelsea. And then... In Azerbaijan, for some reason, we win the Champions League. How many people were there? How many people were watching? I'm not going to lie. It's probably not the most exciting kind of match to go see. I can't see from here anyway. Let's go to schedule. Is it going to tell us there? 82,268 people went to Azerbaijan expecting Arsenal to retain the Champions League for them to just get shown up by little old voluntary of Romania. We've won the Champions League. And that means we have now won two of the technically four European trophies that we could possibly win. We've won the Europa Conference League. We won that once back in 2037. We've now won the Champions League in 2044. We will now have next season the opportunity to win the Super Cup. It just means we need to win the Europa League. And to be honest, I kind of don't want to do it. Because if we win the Europa League, we have to drop out of the Champions League to do that. And I don't think our team is bad enough or anyone else in our league is good enough to get ahead of us, essentially. So looking at the squad, obviously we did have the big injury to Tom Davidson. However, 
he still is our second top goal scorer for the season with 24 goals. He's not even returned back from his injury either. So he's done that in half a season. He's got 24 goals. We've got Luciano. Actually, let's start with Stinger playing on that right-hand side. Was not locked in, by the way. Playing on that right-hand side a few times, mostly off the bench, getting 10 and 10, which is good. Baba and Doi, I imagine you were kind of a backup in the attack midfield role. Yes, you were. Uh, you were ineligible for league games, but you were playing in the champ. You played 90 minutes in the Champions League final, but you have not been playing league games at all. Like He's not even been registered for the league, but he's playing in the Champions League and he's lift lifted the Champions League final medal. Fair enough. Luciano, 15 goals in all competitions. And yes, we might be buying him. We put in a bid of 18.25. Have we put in a bid of 18.25? Yes. Why are we bidding slightly more than we have to pay? Anyway, doesn't matter. We are buying Luciano because, you know, I think he's done pretty well. He's earned that contract. 16 goals for Ivan from defensive midfield is very good. Vinny Marengo, 19 and 18 on the left-hand side. He might have also played up front occasionally. Doesn't look like it. Fair enough. Tom Davidson we've seen. And Carlo McLennan, 28 goals in all competitions. Playing as that attacking midfielder, he's getting very, very good. We are probably going to need to keep giving this man contracts because whilst he's not wanted to leave, he's got a two-year deal. We need to probably extend that, but he's wanted by all of the big boys and Al Hilal. Speaking of players who need new contracts, Bertelsen, i constantly offering him new deals. I'm offering him a new deal now. It will still have a minimum fee release, but it's going to bump it up to about 14 million. I'm hoping this is all... We're just going to have to keep doing this every year, give him a new contract and just try and hopefully agree with their agent to just get rid of it at some point or just put it so high that I'm kind of okay with selling him. Like if we get it to minimum fee release to like 80 million, if he gets sold for that, that's probably fine. Something else that I need to mention, Meziani, the now 34-year-old, soon to be 35-year-old legendary striker. He's not legendary for the club, but he is for me, will be leaving in just 29 days. He is out of contract. He is wanted by a lot of teams. I actually had him transfer listed, tried to get rid of him in January. He's wanted by a couple of teams in Qatar and the United Arab Emirates. So we will be saying goodbye to Meziani. He still played a few times this season. He should have picked up a Champions League winner's medal because he's played six times as well. So Meziani, if we could pick our club legend, I don't think he is one. He's not. He's, he's, not, even, he's not even... Oh, he is there. He's an icon. I would say he's a legend. He's an absolute legend, Meziani is. But this is the last season he's going to be playing for us. He has played, I think it's like eight seasons where he scored double figures for the first team in all competitions, which is just madness. Yes, eight league goals, but he's also got three in continental competitions in that one. He's got, I mean, Meziani's a legend. He's a club legend. He's been here forever. Is he even part Romanian? He's part Romanian, guys. Meziani is probably one of my favourite footballers in this year's Football Manager. And he's not even that good. In all honesty, he's not that good. He just does the job. Before we finish then, let's take a look at the coefficient. Sixth place, Romania have picked up just 15.786. For winning the Champions League, we picked up slightly more points than that season there where we didn't win it, less than that season where we didn't win it, and less than that season where we didn't win it. I mean, that's not good, guys. Everyone else in Romania is not doing their job, okay? We are falling much further behind France and Italy, by the looks of it, they're kind of getting closer and closer together. Luckily for us, Belgium are a bit too far away. I will tell you now, guys, I don't think we are going to make Romania the best nation when it comes to club coefficient. I don't think it's going to happen. Also, I've been completely neglecting the Romanian national side. They're rubbish. Um, they've not gone any higher than 34th in the world rankings. If we look at their competition history, they, they don't ever do anything. They get to the round of 16, apparently, a few years ago. Um, that's pretty much it. They, they don't really do much at all. European Championships... They just finish bottom of their group every time they qualify. Um, yeah, it's not well. Admittedly, they've not even kicked this one off, but I, I imagine they're going to finish bottom of their group. That is going to do it then for season 21. We're champions of Europe. Somehow, we are champions of Europe with this FC Voluntari side. Next time around season 22, I guess we have to try and do it again. I don't think it's going to happen, but that needs to realistically be our target.